A billion-dollar plan to retire humanity's most ambitious space outpost has just been thrown into chaos. While NASA has meticulously planned for the International Space Station's controlled destruction in 2030, Elon Musk has unexpectedly called for accelerating this timeline, recommending the ISS be deorbited as soon as possible, preferably within just two years. The twist? SpaceX is already being paid $800 million to build the specialized vehicle that will eventually guide the Million Pound Station to its watery grave at Point Nemo in the Pacific Ocean. This sudden pivot comes amid growing tension between Musk and the space community, following a heated exchange where Musk publicly insulted European astronaut Andreas Mogensen after disagreements about the so-called stranded astronaut situation. Today on Elon Musk 24 Hours, we're breaking down what's really happening with the ISS deorbiting plans, the full context behind Musk's controversial statements, and the latest updates on SpaceX's Starship program following their recent test flight investigation. Let's dive right in. NASA's carefully orchestrated plan for the International Space Station's retirement has been in place since summer 2024. The timeline stretches to 2030, a date chosen after meticulous analysis of the station's structural integrity, operational capabilities, and scientific value. The current plan unfolds in three phases. Maintain full operations until 2030. Allow natural orbital decay for approximately one year. Deploy a specialized deorbit vehicle for the final controlled descent. This final phase is critical. Bringing a million pound structure down safely is no small feat. The target landing zone, Point Nemo, sits in the South Pacific Ocean between New Zealand and Chile. Known as the Spacecraft Graveyard, it's Earth's most remote location from any landmass, minimizing risk to human populations. SpaceX secured an $800 million contract to build this specialized deorbit vehicle, essentially a modified Dragon spacecraft equipped with powerful thrusters. Delivery was expected by 2028, giving NASA two years of margin before the planned deorbit. Musk's unexpected acceleration? Last week, Musk posted on X, it is time to begin preparations for deorbiting the space station. It has served its purpose. There is very little incremental utility. Let's go to Mars. When pressed for clarification by Eric Berger of Ars Technica about whether he meant before 2030, Musk replied bluntly, the decision is up to the president, but my recommendation is as soon as possible. I recommend two years from now. This statement effectively proposes a 60% acceleration of the existing timeline, requiring SpaceX to deliver its deorbit vehicle years ahead of schedule. Anyone familiar with aerospace development knows this industry rarely delivers early. In fact, delays are standard practice. What makes this particularly interesting is that SpaceX would need to dramatically accelerate development of hardware they're already being paid to build. Meanwhile, NASA and international partners have signed contracts extending operations through 2030, many with SpaceX itself. The scientific community has responded with confusion. Dr. Kathleen Rubens, former ISS astronaut and microbiologist, noted in a recent interview, the station continues to provide unique scientific capabilities that cannot be replicated elsewhere. Accelerating its retirement without replacement facilities ready would create a significant gap in our research capabilities. The bigger picture, contractor to decision maker. Musk's comments about the ISS don't exist in isolation. They appear to be part of a broader shift in how he positions himself within America's space program. Moving from contractor to policy influencer. This strategic positioning became clear during the controversial stranded astronaut narrative that's been circulating in recent months. Let's break this down. Boeing's Starliner test flight returned to Earth without crew members Butch Wilmore and Sonny Williams after technical issues emerged. Instead of following the original flight plan, NASA implemented its contingency protocol. The astronauts would remain on the ISS and return on a SpaceX Dragon capsule. Media outlets quickly crafted a dramatic, stranded-in-space narrative. Both NASA and the astronauts themselves pushed back against this characterization with Williams stating during a space-to-ground interview, we're not stranded, we're simply on an extended mission with a different return vehicle. The astronauts even completed a challenging five-hour spacewalk in January, hardly the actions of desperate castaways. 
Yet during a Fox News interview alongside former President Trump, Musk claimed, the Starliner astronauts were stranded last year. SpaceX could have rescued them, but President Biden prevented that from happening for political reasons. This statement omits crucial context. NASA's plan already included SpaceX as the primary contractor for the astronauts' return. A Dragon capsule with two empty seats was launched in September 2024, with a scheduled return in February 2025. That return didn't happen on schedule, not because of presidential intervention, but because SpaceX encountered manufacturing delays with the new Dragon capsule that would replace the returning crew members. The astronaut confrontation European astronaut Andreas Mogensen, who commanded the ISS in 2023 to 2024 and piloted a SpaceX Dragon capsule, took issue with Musk's characterization. He posted on X, what a lie. Musk's response was uncharacteristically harsh for public discourse about space operations. You are fully R-worded. SpaceX could have brought them back several months ago. I offered this directly to the Biden administration and they refused. Return was pushed back for political reasons. Idiot. NASA's carefully orchestrated plan for the International Space Station's retirement has been in place since summer 2024. The timeline stretches to 2030, a date chosen after meticulous analysis of the station's structural integrity, operational capabilities, and scientific value. The current plan unfolds in three phases. Maintain full operations until 2030. Allow natural orbital decay for approximately one year. Deploy a specialized deorbit vehicle for the final controlled descent. This final phase is critical. Bringing a million pound structure down safely is no small feat. The target landing zone, Point Nemo, sits in the South Pacific Ocean between New Zealand and Chile. Known as the spacecraft graveyard, it's Earth's most remote location from any landmass, minimizing risk to human populations. SpaceX secured an $800 million contract to build this specialized deorbit vehicle, essentially a modified Dragon spacecraft equipped with powerful thrusters. Delivery was expected by 2028, giving NASA two years of margin before the planned deorbit. Musk's unexpected acceleration. Last week, Musk posted on X, it is time to begin preparations for deorbiting the space station. It has served its purpose. There is very little incremental utility. Let's go to Mars. When pressed for clarification by Eric Berger of Ars Technica about whether he meant before 2030, Musk replied bluntly, the decision is up to the president, but my recommendation is as soon as possible. I recommend two years from now. This statement effectively proposes a 60% acceleration of the existing timeline, requiring SpaceX to deliver its deorbit vehicle years ahead of schedule. Anyone familiar with aerospace development knows this industry rarely delivers early. In fact, delays are standard practice. What makes this particularly interesting is that SpaceX would need to dramatically accelerate development of hardware they're already being paid to build. Meanwhile, NASA and international partners have signed contracts extending operations through 2030, many with SpaceX itself. The scientific community has responded with confusion. Dr. Kathleen Rubens, former ISS astronaut and microbiologist, noted in a recent interview, the station continues to provide unique scientific capabilities that cannot be replicated elsewhere. Accelerating its retirement without replacement facilities ready would create a significant gap in our research capabilities. The bigger picture, contractor to decision maker. Musk's comments about the ISS don't exist in isolation. They appear to be part of a broader shift in how he positions himself within America's space program. Moving from contractor to policy influencer. This strategic positioning became clear during the controversial stranded astronaut narrative that's been circulating in recent months. Let's break this down. Boeing's Starliner test flight returned to Earth without crew members Butch Wilmore and Sonny Williams after technical issues emerged. Instead of following the original flight plan, NASA implemented its contingency protocol. The astronauts would remain on the ISS and return on a SpaceX Dragon capsule. Media outlets quickly crafted a dramatic, stranded-in-space narrative. Both NASA and the astronauts themselves pushed back against this characterization, with Williams stating during a space-to-ground interview, We're not stranded, we're simply on an extended mission with a different return vehicle. 
The astronauts even completed a challenging five-hour spacewalk in January. Hardly the actions of desperate castaways. Yet during a Fox News interview alongside former President Trump, Musk claimed the Starliner astronauts were stranded last year. SpaceX could have rescued them, but President Biden prevented that from happening for political reasons. This statement omits crucial context. NASA's plan already included SpaceX as the primary contractor for the astronauts' return. A Dragon capsule with two empty seats was launched in September 2024, with a scheduled return in February 2025. That return didn't happen on schedule, not because of presidential intervention, but because SpaceX encountered manufacturing delays with the new Dragon capsule that would replace the returning crew members. The astronaut confrontation European astronaut Andreas Mogensen, who commanded the ISS in 2023 to 2024 and piloted a SpaceX Dragon capsule, took issue with Musk's characterization. He posted on X, what a lie. Musk's response was uncharacteristically harsh for public discourse about space operations. You are fully R-worded. SpaceX could have brought them back several months ago. I offered this directly to the Biden administration and they refused. Return was pushed back for political reasons. Idiot. Monson, a Danish astronaut with experience piloting both Soyuz and Dragon vehicles, has been described by American astronaut Scott Kelly as one of the most honest, trustworthy people I've ever met. When Kelly defended his colleague, Musk doubled down, responding, Yes, he does. He's an idiot who publicly attacked me despite having no idea what actually happened. By the way, your brother claims to be independent, but is just a Dem donor shill. Just two hours after these heated exchanges, Musk announced his accelerated timeline for deorbiting the ISS. The timing raises questions about whether personal friction might be influencing policy positions that affect a $150 billion international scientific platform. The Starship Investigation Results Meanwhile, SpaceX has completed its investigation into the unscheduled destruction of the Starship upper stage during the company's seventh test flight. The failure sequence began with a propellant leak in the liquid oxygen system. This created a dangerous buildup of pressure in an area known as the attic, the space between the engine heat shield and the bottom of the oxygen tank. This compartment is designed to remain unpressurized during flight. Two minutes after the leak began, a sustained fire erupted in the attic section. This triggered automated shutdown sequences on all but one of Starship's engines. The fire eventually severed communication links with the vehicle. What's particularly concerning is that SpaceX lost contact with the massive rocket while it was still in flight with an active fire burning inside it. The vehicle continued flying without ground control for approximately three minutes before breaking apart. Post-flight analysis confirmed that the automated flight termination system did eventually activate, with breakup occurring within flight termination system expectations. SpaceX engineers identified the root cause as a harmonic response several times stronger in flight than we had seen during testing, which led to increased stress on hardware in the propulsion system. In simpler terms, parts vibrated more violently than expected, and something broke. To address these issues, SpaceX has implemented several critical changes. Extended static fire testing on the ground with the next Starship vehicle. Addition of a new ventilation and fire suppression system in the attic section. Upgraded engine igniters on the super heavy booster. This last modification addresses why one engine out of 13 failed to light during the boost back burn on Flight 7. The engine was healthy and did ignite for the landing burn, but simply failed to spark during the boost back maneuver. Despite these setbacks, SpaceX is moving forward aggressively. They're targeting this Friday, February 28th at 5.30 p.m. Central Time for the next Starship launch, pending regulatory approval. This ambitious timeline demonstrates SpaceX's rapid iteration philosophy in action, with Flight 8 aiming to achieve all the same milestones as Flight 7, including the deployment of Starlink satellite mass simulators as a suborbital payload. The Mars connection Musk's comment about Mars in his ISS deorbiting post reveals an important aspect of his strategic thinking. By positioning the ISS as having served its purpose with very little incremental utility, he creates a narrative framework that supports redirecting resources toward his Mars ambitions. This perspective stands in contrast to NASA's current 
Moon-to-Mars approach, which envisions using lunar missions as technological stepping stones before attempting Mars landings. Under NASA's plan, the Commercial LEO Destinations Program would replace the ISS with private space stations before a Mars push. Industry analysts suggest Musk may be growing impatient with this methodical approach. Former NASA Deputy Administrator Lori Garver noted in a recent Space Policy Forum, there's tension between NASA's incremental approach and Musk's desire for transformational leaps. Both have valid points, but the transition needs careful management to maintain continuous human presence in orbit. The question becomes whether accelerating the ISS deorbit timeline would actually speed up Mars exploration or simply create a gap in our orbital capabilities without advancing the Mars timeline. The bigger questions, the situation raises fundamental questions about how space policy decisions should be made. Who should have decisive influence over multinational space assets? What role should private contractors play in setting timelines for public infrastructure? How do we balance innovation and safety in space exploration? What scientific capabilities would be lost with an early ISS retirement? The ISS has hosted over 3,000 experiments from researchers in 108 countries, studying everything from disease treatments to fundamental physics. Recent breakthroughs in protein crystallization could lead to more effective treatments for conditions ranging from Alzheimer's to cancer. And early deorbiting without replacement facilities would create a gap in capabilities that many researchers worry could set back numerous scientific fields. Dr. Sarah Menendez, principal investigator for the Cardinal Heart Experiment, expressed concern. The microgravity environment provides insights we simply cannot replicate on Earth. Losing access, even temporarily, would significantly slow progress in tissue engineering and regenerative medicine. For now, NASA maintains its 2030 timeline, with Administrator Bill Nelson recently reaffirming this position during congressional testimony. The agency emphasizes that any change would require consultation with international partners who have invested billions in the station. What's clear is that the next few years will be pivotal for defining humanity's future in space. The decisions made about the ISS will ripple through space policy for decades to come.